Gigabyte make pretty decent motherboards, but if you're not in a kind of budget for the Ioros offerings, then how about the Gigabyte X870 Gaming X Wi-Fi 7? Not to be confused with the Gaming Non-X Wi-Fi 6, that's a completely different thing, with this one costing you $250. So what do you get for that price? Well, starting off with CPU power, here we have 16 plus 2 plus 2 power phases rated at a maximum of 60 amps, which is more than enough for pretty much any CPU you want to throw in it. And while it doesn't have the same 8 plus 8 pin configuration, the 8 plus 4 is once again just fine and you literally notice no difference in normal use. And when it comes to memory support, well it's officially rated for up to 8000 mega transfers per second. About what you'd expect for this budget, but there are some of the boards that actually offer slightly higher supported memory at a lower price. Anyway, coming down to PC expansion, that is probably the weakest link of this motherboard. While you do have a primary PC, Gen 5 16x slot, the other two slots only just have one Gen 3 lane each, which is pretty unfortunate, and again just begs the question of why not make one of those slots physical 1x? Yes, I know it's about compatibility, but at the same time, can all agree that a 1x card always looks better in a 1x slot. And the M.2 situation isn't much better. While you do have three M.2 slots, one of them being Gen 5 and the other two being Gen 4, if you actually put a Gen 4 drive in that second slot, it will disable the third one, meaning that that one is literally just kept out at Gen 3 in practice, unless you want to disable one of your slots. Plus, you only get four SATA connectors. So the whole PCE and storage situation is definitely something to look out for. On top of that, it also has just six fan connectors, which is a bit less than most motherboards at this price range, though at least it has three addressable and one old-fashioned RGB connector. Finally, when it comes to the rear I.O., while we do get a respectable eight USB Type-A ports, it's definitely not the ridiculous amount, like 12, for example, we see on some Gigabyte models. What makes this a lot better, though, is the fact you get two full-fledged 40 gigabit per second USB Type-C ports, which is great to see. Add to that HDMI 4 integrated graphics, you also get 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi 7 via the Easy Plug connector that the company introduced with this generation, and also unfortunately just the free audio jacks which we come to expect from Gigabyte at this point. Still disappointing, though again I understand that most people will not need more than that, and most people don't need optical spdiff either, meaning that for $250 it's kind of in an awkward spot. Sure you save a buck compared to their Euros offerings, but then there's other fantastic budget offerings that may offer pretty much everything you want. For example, the MSI Pro motherboard we recently covered, or even that ASRock one, which was about as cheap as X870 got and still included pretty much all the necessities for the average user. Or even the previously mentioned Gigabyte Gaming Non-X model. At least it has an interesting look to it, so if you don't want that kind of a Euros edgy game aesthetic, that is a plus for this motherboard. But apart from that, there's nothing that makes it stand out too much either, apart from the fact it's just not as expensive as some other X870 motherboards. So if you want to get it yourself, then Amazon and Newegg links to it will be down in the video description below and up in the iCards and maybe check out a Patreon as well, because that is always objectively a good deal, plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, just the Rage, Alevroniak, Balash Velka, Patrick Harrison, Not a Pseudonym, McSumner, Shane Allcroft, Level Up, and Robert Sanders. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.